Welcome team. Let's get everything set up and get ready for today's show. Uh, everyone's, everything seems to be in place, contestants and presenters. Uh, just one thing to note, uh, we don't have our usual Sarah uh, on the auto queue today. Instead, we've got the lovely Carter who is coming, kindly stepped in to help us. Hello, Carter. Right, apologies for the boring bit, but we've got to get out of the way, so we're going to go over the risks and hazards of today's filming and make sure nothing goes wrong. So we have three cameras today, so be careful of wires and cables, as not to trip or hurt yourself or damage any of the equipment. Uh, the fire exits on the studio floor, there will be several arrows to show you to the closest exit when you're in there. Our first aid person today is Alex. If anyone is hurt, please go to him or dial 222 for floor emergencies or 999 if urgent medical care is required. Be careful carrying and unloading heavy equipment. Move in the correct manner and don't take on more than you are able to. The contestants will be playing the tower today as part of our practical element of this evening's show. So be careful as the tower is not damaged and the falling blocks do not hurt anyone on the floor. That should be everything now, but just remember to be safe, do the work and most of all, enjoy it. Oh, and Carter, if you could pop upstairs and get the script for us and pop it on the auto queue, that'd be great. Thank you. Going live in five, four, three, two, one. Cue opening titles. Tonight, two contestants will battle it out to win thousands of pounds and be crowned the know-it-all. Who will it be? Let's find out. I'm your host, Richard Reacher, and in front of me here are today's contestants who will be going head-to-head, -head answering a series of questions and completing a random task in order to decide the know-it-all. Let's introduce them. Contestant number one. Hi, my name is Marty and I'm from Hertfordshire. Fantastic to meet you, Marty. You must feel incredibly here under the lights. What do you do for a living? I'm a postgrad student studying law at Bristol University. Oh, so not quite doing anything for a living yet, but uh, eventually you will. That sounds very complicated. Um, what do you do in your spare time to relax? Yeah, when I'm not working, um, I'm usually playing football with my mates or we go out on the weekend. Got you. So the complicated world of law for a profession, but uh, keeping it simple outside of work. Great. Lovely. So we have uh, a set of questions for you. Let's ex just explain how the game works first. I will ask you both three questions each, and for every question you get right, thousands of pounds will be added to your jackpot. You'll then move into today's mystery practical round, where you'll battle it out for a place in the final and a chance to win your jackpot. If you beat the competition and make it into the final, you'll be asked three more questions. Get them right and you'll make thousands. Get them wrong and you'll lose thousands. You will then face the practical task one last time while you'll either walk away with everything or nothing. But for now, the first round of questions. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. In the UK, NHS stands for National What Service? Humanity, Health, Honour or Household. That would be health service, Richard. Correct. Construction of which of these famous landmarks was completed first? The Empire State Building, Royal Albert Hall, Eiffel Tower or Big Ben Clock Tower? Um, well, the Eiffel Tower and the Empire State, they seem fairly new, so I'm just going to go with Big Ben. Final answer? That's correct. Well done. Which candy was E.T.'s favourite in the movie E.T.? Gummy Bears, Reese's Pieces, Werther's Original or Starburst? I'm not too big on film, so I'm not really sure, so I'm just going to put out a guess and I'm just going to go with Gummy Bears. Gummy Bears. Now, if the question was, what's Rich's favourite sweet, you'd be correct, but I'm afraid it was E.T.'s and that was Reese's Pieces. Sorry, wrong answer. But don't worry, Marty. Two out of three is a very respectable score. That's £10,000 in your jackpot. Now, let's introduce your competition. 
That's surprising. He did so well in the trials. 89%. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, hi there, I'm Kyle and I'm from Milton Keynes. <laughs> Warm welcome to you, Kyle. So same question as I asked Marty. What do you do for a living? Uh, well, I, I would like to study psychology at university. That's what I'd do with the money if I were to win today. Uh, but I'm currently just a customer assistant at Tesco's. Oh, well, no worries. There's plenty of time and uh, it's always mm. good to have those aspirations mm. in the future. Work towards them and what a great use of the money. That would be fantastic. Okay, so hopefully you take away some money. Uh, what do you do when you're, when you're not working? Oh, um, the usual, playing video games, going out during the weekends. Uh, I'm also part of a traditional woodworking society. Which is oh, um, fantastic. So you're used to working with wood and, you, and you've got all that manual dexterity mm -hmm, doing the yeah. job. That, that may well come in handy later. Let's see. So, uh, what we have now are your questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, in three, two, one. First question. In the 1985 film Back to the Future, Doc makes a time machine from which brand of car? Is it the DeLorean DMC 12, Buick Super, Chevrolet Camaro, or AMC Eagle? I've watched this film many times. It's the DeLorean. I think everyone would hate you if you got that one wrong. That is absolutely correct. Question number two. What is the atomic number of nitrogen? Six, seven, eight, or nine? Uh, I think it's seven. Really? Final answer? Yes. Well, you're correct again. Well done, sir. Fantastic. And the final question. Which toys have been marketed with the phrase robots in disguise? Bratz dolls, Sylvanian families, Hatchimals, or Transformers? I don't recognise any of those apart from Transformers, which I used to love watching as a kid. And I'm pretty sure that's what it was written on the package. So I'll go with Transformers. Unbelievable. Well done, sir. 100% correct. Well done. There, Kyle has £15,000 plus the £5,000 bonus that you've moved into your jackpots. Congratulations, Kyle. So, how does it feel? Uh, well, um... Transformers? I'm sure there wasn't a question about that when I did the script run through on Monday. It must be your lucky day, sir. Now, from using your head to using your hands, it's time for our practical round. But what will it be? Basketball? A puzzle? Maybe, let's see. The tower. So, in the box today, our contestants will be facing the tower. This game is about precision. Each contestant must remove as many blocks as they can from the tower. Whoever removes the most blocks makes it into today's final. If the tower falls, they will score zero. Each contestant will only have one minute each to beat the tower, so speed and accuracy are key. The one rule is, once you've touched a block, you must go for it. Marty will go first and Carl will follow. So, Marty, you only good with your hand? Well, my mum's always telling me off for dropping things, so I just need to focus and keep it steady. Well, dropping things doesn't sound too good, but focus definitely sounds like good advice to yourself. Are you ready? Off you go into the box. OK, Marty. Go! Straight in there. It's looking composed, looking calm, very smooth. He really seems to know what he's doing. There's not any movement on the tower at all at this point. Oh no, this is great. Is he going too fast though? This is quite early on in the minute. Ah, oh, that's a risky one. That's a oh no! Oh Marty! Oh my goodness! Come back in. Come and join me. Calamitous! What a nightmare! Now you went in. And you were perfectly composed, coiled like a spring, some might say. And the early moments of the competition there were very smooth. What went wrong? Well, I think my nerves got a bit better of me and I just, I rushed it. And there we have it. Oh well, all is not lost, Marty, as if Kyle also fails to beat the tower. We'll be off to a tie break. Good effort though, Marty. Kyle, come on in. So, as Marty's just shown you, Kyle, 
The uh, tower is quite a beast. It's mm. not an easy beast at all. What makes you think you can do better? Well, you need to be good with your hands for woodworking, so I reckon that will help. Well, that's absolutely true. And what a lovely, positive mental attitude. So if you're ready, off you go into the box. Thank you. OK, Kyle, your minute begins in three, two, one, go. And again, Kyle's in there straight away. That was quite a brave move. We did see a little bit of movement on the tap. And again, we're already seeing a little bit of vibration. He God, he's doing block. well. Oh, that was close. That felt as if it was going to be difficult. Now, remember, Kyle only has to keep taking blocks out because uh, Marty did see his tower fall. So as long as Kyle's relatively conservative here, he should make it through to the end of the minute. Well, he's still doing well. It's obviously a bit of a competitive spirit there as he's uh, taken three blocks down to the river. And some would say the strategy might be to play it safe, but Carl's not playing it safe at this point. And we can see that movement on the tower. My goodness, he is risking everything with some of these moves. Got to keep it easy. Got to keep it easy. He's still doing well. Still doing well. And Carl, we're out in five. Four, three, two, one. Well done, Carl. That's amazing. Bring them up to the window and let's have a count. <laughs> You're outside your minute, so that's all right. How many blocks did you manage to get down? That's the question. Uh, one, I believe it was. Two. Oh, you're going to show me. Three. We'll get this. Don't worry, audience. We'll get this externally four, validated. Five. Five. Well done. Pop them down and come back out. Well, you had a little bit of a nightmare there with the tower coming down at the end, Carl, but you did fantastically well. That is far better than any contestant has ever done in any of our rehearsals, possibly the best time ever. What was your secret? I don't know. I really didn't want to face the tower, so I think it, it was just pure luck. Just pure luck. Well, I think there was quite a lot of skill there as well. Well, that does sadly mean that Marty's going home while Kyle moves into today's final round and will be in with a chance of winning a very large jackpot. We'll find out if Kyle is today's know-it-all after the break. See you then. What the actual fuck just happened up there? Marty, stop shouting. Look, I need this money. I Can't really that's... need this money. There's other ways to make money. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Don't tell me not to worry. I have... Student debt, bills. Do you want me to be homeless, living on the streets? I'm sorry, I tried. The questions weren't what I expected them to be. And anyway, it's about pure luck. What's this all about? You promised this contestant that he would win. I was just giving him advice. It's... You gave him some advice, did you? Our job is to make a fair at program. I'll talk to you after the show. I was so certain I could win. Look, I need you out of this gallery now. Get yourself some air. Get out. Welcome back to Know It All. Kyle beat the tower, removing five blocks, while Marty's only managed to remove three blocks before the tower came crashing down, meaning that Kyle is in the final with a chance of winning thousands of pounds and being crowned today's Know It All. What about that, Carl? Well, I'm nervous, obviously, but I think I've got the brains for this. And of course, you've got the dream of meeting Kylie and uh, driving your pink Merc down the high street. That's fantastic. OK, well, We'll see, won't we, how you do. In this final round, Carl, I'll ask you three more general knowledge questions. However, this time, to make things harder, they're not multiple choice. Your jackpot stands at a whopping £20,000. For every question you get right, 20000 will be added to your jackpot. However, of course, for every wrong answer, you will lose 20000 You ready for that, Carl? Mm -hmm. Yep. OK. Time limited, so keep the speed up. Three, two, one. When was the Star Wars film, The Empire Strikes Back, released? Uh, I think it was in 1980. Final answer? Yes. Correct. From which US city do the band The Killers originate? Uh, it's either Las Vegas or LA. I'm gonna have to rush you. Um, I don't know this one. Uh, I have to go with Las Vegas. Correct. Final question. In which European country would you find the Rijksmuseum? Museum? Oh, I know. It's uh, the Netherlands. He's only gone and done it. The right answer. Well done. Smashed it. 
So, a full house again, Kyle. You've just won a monstrous £100,000. What would you do with the money? Um, I would buy a trip, well, I'd go to Australia for a trip and probably buy a Mercedes, my dream car. Wow, I don't believe it. Hold on, at the top of the show, didn't he say he wanted the money for uni? Mm. Yeah, it's got to be pink. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Um, well, Kylie, only one more thing stands between you and that dream car and holiday of a lifetime. It's very simple. You must enter the box for a final time to face the tower. This time, the tower's already had some blocks removed, making it very unstable. You'll have 30 seconds to remove one block from the tower. Now, if the tower stays standing, you win the money, and the crown today's know it all. However, if the tower falls, you leave here with nothing. Again, one hand only. Once you've touched a block, you must remove it. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Then enter the box. This is serious stuff. This is all that's between Kyle and that prize fund, that jackpot money. So Kyle, <clears throat> get ready in three, two, one, go. He's already, you see, he already jumped the gun. He's looking very, very closely checking out all of the blocks. Um, as soon as he touches one, he's committed. So he's going for it. And there we are, right in the middle. Is that going to be a problem? There wasn't any movement. And he's got, <laughs> well done, he's done it. It's fantastic, pop the block down. Oh, throw it down and come back. Come on back to the podium. Well done, sir, fantastic. You must feel amazing. I feel amazing, absolutely amazing. Absolutely, and all of that money, that's just going to be brilliant. You're off to university. Yes. And don't forget your holiday and your... <laughs> and your car and all that. Well, after a stunning performance, Carl is today's know-it-all. Join me again tomorrow, same time, same place, when two more contestants will be battling it out once again for the chance to be crowned the know-it-all. And we're off air. Thank you everyone, great job. Can we start breaking down the set please? Something's not right here. We never had a contestant getting 100%. That's impossible. Yeah, I mean, look at, these are Carl's trial results. 27%, so weird. Look. I think graphics is up to something, particularly as it seems that they conveniently disappeared at the same time. Yeah, but he was helping Marty. Well, Carl and Marty went to the same trial day. Marty could have got cocky, told Carl his plans, and then Carl decided to bribe graphics and helping him instead. Yeah, quite possibly. I'm sure the questions have been changed. Three film questions in one show isn't normal. Uh, writers always choose different things. Um, did you see graphics like messing with autohue at all? Not that I'm aware of, but also maybe the questions have been rigged. But what about the tower? That's pure luck. I'm sorry to intrude, but uh, these blocks have been tampered with. The ones are all multiple of five, and they've all been sanded down. There isn't something quite right. I retract my point. Carl said he enjoys woodworking. This is something that he definitely has the tools and skills to do. Where did you get the blocks from? The scene doc, I guess. No, I didn't actually. That guy on auto queue, I don't know what his name is, but uh, he gave me the blocks. He was just trying to be helpful and apparently wanted to help us or our, our team out. Carter, how do you know where the props are? I don't know, he just he just gave them to me. It was just in these bags. Okay, thanks for that, man. Oh, thank you, mate. I can't believe this. I can't fucking believe this. Today was supposed to be my day off, and I've had to come in because of this car crash. Those weren't the questions that I showed you on Monday. These were, and they were still on my desk. Who was supposed to go and collect these scripts in the morning? Carter was in control of the script. And Carter was in control of the props. He was in charge of the whole bloody show. 